Hey guys, we are live. This is Quest for Vape, my Tuesday afternoon how to build coils workshop. It's always live and then there's a replay. What's up? I'm joined by Zach Marable down in Louisiana. How you doing, Zach? What is going on, people? Vape moderation, you know me, and I always like to be here on Daryl's show and uh, part of the little coil building tutorials. Well, thanks for being here, man. Um, yeah, I'm going to do something today. Uh, last week I got this OBS Creus RTA, and I'm enjoying it, and it's taken a little bit of, uh, yeah, it's an interesting tank, and I'm, I'm fiddling around with it. The build wasn't too difficult. The wicking is more sensitive, so I'm going to do a build and wick on this. Have I've, you, been uh, hearing, I've been hearing a lot of good stuff about that. In fact, everybody who says if you like the Bellis, you should try the, the Creus. I love it. I love it. And then, um, and I think wicking is the key here. So let me hold this up. So hopefully YouTube grabs this as the thumbnail instead of like my ugly face every time <laughs> on my whole channel, every video I ever do. Uh, all right. So that's what today's workshop is going to be about. But before we get into that, let's talk about what we're vaping on and specifically take a few minutes to like honorable mention, shout out, who do you like right now with vaping gear, juice? What's what do you got? So I'm vaping on the um, Philip Rock um, Grand Reserve. The I'm vape, vaping on batch six, but they just came out with batch seven on Monday. I don't even think they've started shipping it yet, but I pre-ordered already. Um, and I'm I'm vaping on this Danny. Uh, die codes extreme v2 plus this is the new one with the spring-loaded 510 and the new firmware and uh, And that's my shot my shout outs really to Philip rock it, the new stuff is out people get it. Don't be late Yeah, that's good stuff. That's good stuff. I get I get like Hazelnut and cream. It's such a good rich nice vape um, They age that for like three months. That's why it's it's like a reserve because they don't just always have it on the shelf. Some, if you see it out there available, grab up like three, four bottles of it, even if you're not going to vape them immediately, because then you won't see it around for a couple of months and you'll be, you'll have a hankering for it. Yeah. I had to, I had to go really hunting deep to find the batch six when the batch seven is just coming out. And that's because just because I, like Daryl saying, I bought a 30 mil bottle thinking this is cool. And then that ran out and, there was almost none to be found. It was difficult. And it's good shit. All right. I got a bunch of shout outs that I need to do because, um, because so, um, well, first things first I have, when I was at the vape expo, I got the Heracles plus that's the new tank. It's black and it also has top fill and it also has a slightly different coil and it's badass. I just finished my, video I'm, I'm editing in a couple of things and then i'm combining that but but i love this tank i honestly i mean i've only been vaping on it for a couple of days but it it's a serious contender for uh for the crown it what's really the, is uh, what's that airflow up at the top of it is yeah. that drip tip airflow um no it's got top airflow if you want it and that could be like adjusted and closed off but it's got four slots the same airflow that was on the cyclone tank, they got rid of that uh, that cyclone thing. And then it does also have like a, a juice control, which you have to make sure you close when you're filling this thing. It doesn't have bottom fill. It's only top fill. Um, and that airflow on top cools the vape. It doesn't mute the flavor. It dilutes it a little bit, but, but it's not bad. I mean, like I, I vape this to 120 watts in my video. I'll show that. And then... It doesn't even, the tank gets warm. The drip tip stays really cool, like like barely even warm. And then if you really feel like you need to uh, lower the intensity, you can keep the wattage up and then add some airflow. So this tank is really, tell you what, I love this tank. Um, more shout outs. I'm vaping on, where is this stuff? Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, but it's, it's necessary. I have this. I have this giveaway going on right now every day of the month of December. So naturally I have to have stuff to give away and I want to shout out to companies that are supporting my giveaway. Uncle Junk's Fob Cabin. I'm vaping on this stuff right now. It's like unbelievably good. Uh, Pink Meadow. 
It's vanilla, vanilla cake and strawberry, like glazed strawberries. Mm. Unbelievable. Sounds tasty. I have that in that Heracles tank, and it's, it's, it's like the best strawberry vape I ever had. Um, who else do I want to shout out? This is a juice company that was at the Vape Expo, and they, weren't, they didn't bring any juice. They had shirts on, but they were representing uh, Safada. That, uh, that's the organization for vape shop. Here it is. Like I went over there and I've seen them before and I know they have a juice company and they have a vape shop and um, and they weren't selling anything. They were just there just for advocacy. And Safada is more along the lines of industry uh, companies, industry professionals, uh, vape shops and, and companies instead of like Casa, which is geared more towards everybody, but also individuals. Like Safada is where you join if you're in the industry. And um, so I thought that was interesting. and. I was like, hey, let me give you a shout out on my channel because you're not here making money. You're here just literally to uh, to raise awareness for advocacy. Brain freeze, this is uh, like berries and cream, no menthol, just delicious. So, Oh, it sounds, me... like, it sounds like it would be a menthol vape. That's what I thought because of the freeze, that that connotation, but it's not. It's just, uh, it's really nice. Just a bunch of berries and cream, believe it or not. Um, so that's all I'm going to shout out for today. Oh, there is, I'm going to do some giveaways at the end of the show. I'm giving away the, um, the Cloudpour Mini 50 watt with temperature control, the Cloudpour Mini Plus. That's from last week's show. Um, and then I'm just going to mention I've got uh, the Schwartz E liquid. You can still get on on that. You got a comment in my video on my channel for the Schwartz E liquid giveaway. That was from yesterday. You can still get in on Cloud Thieves from Sunday. And then um, once I post my video in a couple of minutes, uh, my review video for the Heracles, I'm actually going to tag on a giveaway for um, Uncle Junk's Fog Cabin. Hey, Paul Anderson, what's up, brother? What about you, Dave? Hey, you're not in. Uh, you're not in uniform. You must have a day off. No, Morgan tonight, but okay. What do you? What do you work security at Allstate Insurance Company? No, I take the call center. Oh, okay. Okay. Good to see you, brother. We just got done introducing ourselves. This is Paul Anderson, the cloud chasing cyclist, and he likes to ride around Belfast, Ireland whilst vaping and and <laughs> recording himself vlog style on his bicycle, uh, chucking clouds around Belfast. Yeah, that's me. I'm actually in the middle I'm actually in the middle of uploading the video tomorrow. Oh, you're liking this YouTube stuff, huh? Yeah. Good shit, man. I like the way your channel's developing. I watch the videos when they come out. I don't always comment because I don't want to look like I'm fanboying on you too much, you know. But like, good stuff, man. And you're coming along. Like you I didn't. <laughs> What's that? You know you love it. <laughs> I do. I do. The first time I ever saw you do a video, and there was a big, like, double decker stack red bus behind you. I didn't realize that's. Actually, wallpaper <laughs> on <Yeah>. your wall. <laughs> That's that dark. Yeah, and sometimes he stands in front of it, and I'm like, yo, that he better hope that bus driver doesn't get back from his lunch break and, and like, start up and run him over. <laughs> Good stuff, man. Paul recently went to the uh, Vape, what was it, Vape Ireland? Vape Ex Fest Ireland. Vape Fest Ireland. You were hanging out with some pretty cool people over there, huh? Yeah, Grim Green, Claude, um, and he's from Ring Mods, the other. Very nice. Looked yeah. like a lot of fun. Look, looked like a, a whole lot of fun. You got, you got a lot of US-based juices, too, when you were there. Yeah, um, majority of them have reviewed. The only ones left is the Suicide Bunny Range and ISM. Cool. Very cool. All right, so um, without further ado, let me get into this build. Oh, what are you vaping on, Paul? Shout outs, any any good gear, any any special juice companies you want to shout out? Go right ahead. Um, Vape Wave, the bracket cereal one. Yeah, that's Fruit Hoops. Um, the Mom Series box with the new Disney Oh, very nice. Very nice. All right, man. Yeah, Vapor Wild's good stuff. I see them at a lot of big shows too. Yeah, they're clusters. Hundreds of flavors. They're clusters, awesome. 
It's a very good quality, affordable juice. Like you could buy 60s and 120s, I believe, very and 30s, very affordable. Yeah. I got a big old sample pack from them in that in, uh, in one of my backpacks over here. Oh, cool. We yeah, just. Uh, hey guys, talk amongst yourselves for a few seconds, okay? I got to. Um, I want to check chat, and I also have to correct my uh, my titling of this video. <laughs> oh, you'll like that bit white stuff you've got. What's that? You like that bit white sample set you've got? I haven't actually tried it. It's part of a huge pile of samples I picked up at VPX New Orleans, and. Uh, yeah. I just haven't got around to it, but they did give me a big old box with like, I don't know, six or eight flavors in it or something. Yeah. What are you on? What What's are you that? vaping on? What are you vaping on now? Oh, uh, right now I'm vaping on the uh, the Philip Rock Grand Reserve. Thank you. This is the sixth edition. I got the seventh edition on the way. Yeah, I've uh, been talking to the I Love Donuts company, and they're sounding over their name. Who are you? So I'm looking for that. Like, let's try a couple of their samples there, and it'll be a good. Yeah, I All right, Merry Christmas. I just invited everybody in chat. Let's. We got Rhonda McGee. What's up, Rhonda? She's a sweetheart. She's. Always, always watching and, and, and supportive of the channels, not just mine, but everybody else's when we're doing shows. Thank you, Rhonda. There's Gizzard Stew. What's up, Giz? There's B-Man Vapes. All right. All right. Like, we got some very, very cool people that follow the stuff we do, and I appreciate that. Nerd so Mr. I just put Scully. a link. What's that? Nerd Mr. Scully. Hi, oh, yeah, James got on. By the way, I just put a link in chat. If you guys want, click that link. That'll bring you into the show. All right? When it fills up, it fills up. But let's get a crowd in here today. James Scullion, how you doing, buddy? How's it going, man? Fantastic. Good to see you. If you guys hear some, like, snuffling and, and snarling behind me, it's my dog. She's uh, She's got some respiratory thing going on. And, she don't breathe too easy these days, but just ignore that. Anyway, hey James, what are you uh, what are you vaping on? You got any shout outs, juice, mods, gear, well, anything? I'm using my own juice at the minute, but I'm using the aromamizer today, so I'm on the Sigeli 150 watt. I picked it up for like 20 pound the other day, so I thought I would use it. I'm also nice. using the mini box series. All tidy inside, solid silver internals with the Buddha V2. Very nice. Very nice. Cool. All right. And James DIYs juice. He doesn't need juice from any company because he makes some bomb ass custard, from what I understand. <laughs> yeah. You know there? I, put, I made some custard donut there the other day. I ended up mixing it with my custard, and it actually tastes pretty good right now. So. Nice. Very nice. All right. So I was going to do a rebuild on the Creus RTA that just came out recently. It's been much hyped, and I got one. A uh, guy in Brooklyn owns a vape shop called Drop Smoke, and he gave it to me. He had samples. And uh, yeah, so I got that Creus, and I'm going to go show you guys. I've built it already. I've built it a couple of times. I used lightning wire, um, no, mad rabbit wire, which is stainless steel with a little bit of canthol, and then I uh, built it again using um, just plain canthol. I like it. I like it a lot. So I'm going to dive down, hijack the screen. Bear with me one second. Present to everybody. All right. Without further ado, the OBS Creus tank. Yeah, this is like a little mini live on air. Here's, here's the packaging. This thing comes with a spare tank, a yellow screwdriver, 
which is nice. It's refreshing. Change of color. Introduction manual. Cotton. Spare O-rings. Spare screws for the post. And uh, and it came with four coils. These are the coils that it comes with. They're Canthal 24 gauge pre-built co uh, coils. So I I built it the first time just using my own wire. Um, I'll show you what I used, and it was a little too low resistance. This is Mad Rabbit. It was very aggressive. And then um, yeah, you know what? This but this this even comes with some uh, some spare Canthal. But I, I then the second time I built it, I used the uh, the pre-made coils that come with it. And they're, they're pretty good, but what it also shows you is a good idea what the manufacturer recommends you use or the type of build that's going to work best with it. So they're spaced, but they're pretty tight. They're pretty close together, and I think that's like uh, seven wraps. Seven wraps, 24 gauge. So when the manufacturer is showing you how they would pre-build, you got to take that as a little bit bit of a clue if you're a basic beginner starting out on all this stuff before getting into now if you're an advanced vapor and you've been doing builds for a while you want to do Clapton's God bless you um, I don't see how there would be room in here for Clapton's but that's just me all right well I open this up and get it exposed and everything any why don't you guys chat a little bit have you who has this tank have you heard about it what have you heard I'm hearing a lot of good Anybody? things about it at the minute, so I'm like, um, Phil, uh, David Nelson Jenkins from Oh My God Mods has actually got like the the tank part of it custom done by Signature Tips with the Oh My God logo and on the drip tip too. Uh, it looks pretty awesome. And it's powerful. Cool. What do you mean partial? It's powerful. Uh, there's some you can do some builds in there, like you can run it right up, high nice and high watts of it, like. Oh, I got you. See him. I ran this up to 90 watt. Uh, yeah, 90 watts, and it was it was vaping great. And I think I'm going to show you guys in a second. I I I wicked it too much. By the way, what's nice about this, you can just leave your, your juice in the tank and yep. you don't have to completely disassemble it, which is very nice. You can theoretically bottom fill it. I tried, but those those holes are kind of like you have to go in through the side and it didn't really work out too well. Half the juice went right down. So it's a top fill. I'll show you how that works. And it's best to just just stick with top filling it. You would have to get a unicorn bottle, or uh, or a syringe needle type bottle, like through there, th through one of these holes, for that to work out. But getting close up here, here's why this didn't work well for me. I wicked it too much. These are too long, and they, you see how much cotton is in that, and, and it, I stuffed it down in there, like like. The instruction manual shows you. Oops. Instruction manual shows you to, to like leave the wicks long, and then stuff them all the way down into this area, this juice well here, and then out. You're supposed to actually come out this hole. That don't do that. That's way too much cotton. Like I'll show you how much cotton really this this only needed. So actually, if I wanted to leave the same build in. I'd probably be good and just shorten that up by like a whole bunch. And um and talking with like Vape and Heathen and Mike Vapes and Brian Vapor Chronicles the other day, they said you basically they've had this tank for probably a month. You need barely enough to eat to just sit, just sit right in that little cup. So like, can you guys see this okay? Yep. So like, that's all you need right there for for this. That's it. Just barely sitting in there. You don't have to go down through this hole and out into the tank. That's 
that's why it would it would vape fine and then I'd put it down and come back to it and then it would dry hit because the cotton was swelling up from the heat. So that's all it needs to do. This is the pre-made coil. Actually, we'll make this really easy. Today I'm just going to fix the wicking job that I had in this. Yeah, you know why I'm going to do that instead of a whole rebuild? Because I'm lazy. But also I want to show you guys, you don't, you don't just... You don't have to throw the baby out with the bath water. I got the build in correct. I really, you can see I barely even vaped on it. It's not even discolored. It's ever since the blue, the R RTAs have been less on board. What's that? Ever since the Bellow V2, Wigan seems to be less as more on all RTAs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm feeling. And, and I think it was probably always the case. We just weren't vaping with high wattage. I mean, when I used to use a K fund, I was at like 8 watts, 10 watts. What does the Proveri go up to? That's what I use my K fund on. Not much. So that's all that, you know, you can, you can jam the cotton in there. You're not vaping at high wattage anyway. It's going to work fine. But with these guys, and probably if I would have stayed around 25, 30 watts, that would have been okay also. But I no, I had to go up to, I literally vaped this at like 80 to 90 watts. And then it did me in because it was fine for a couple of hits and then it dry hit me. And, ooh, that was, that was nasty. I like how you say you had to bring it up to 80, 90 watts. Like something super, supernatural forced you to... Yeah. Definitely, like, it was no other choice in the matter. It was, it was for my, it was research for my subscribers. The things I do for you guys. No, it's <laughs> obsessive compulsive behavior. So there's, there's this nice, like, yeah, I'll pull this one out and show you guys how the juice channel, is that in focus? Not a whole lot. No. Sorry. Not a whole lot. That sucks. How about now? Uh, that's good. See that juice channel? It's got like this guide to it, like this little ring of metal. So so you go down the top, and then you, there's that hole on the side. I had even thought about just taking some wire cutters and cutting that so it was just a big open channel, but Mike Vape said, no, nah, that kind of like acts as a guide. All right, so you guys can see that. That's all. The cotton just needed a bit of a haircut. Every time, every time I try and just cut back the cotton, I end up with too short of a wick. Oh. I think I'm good. We'll see. It's either going to be good or it's going to leak and punish me. It'll make, make for an interesting episode. That it will. <laughs> so one thing with these also is you want to check the resistance when it's like this. Okay, yeah, that's what it was reading the other day, 0.3. If I go ahead and put it on the tank and, and then that resistance changes, it means that something, something happened while I was installing it, like in closing it all up. So that's, that's an indication that something's going on when this screws down, if the coil was hitting. But let's see how we do. So you've got an ohm reader that works this time? Uh, it's the same one. It just this one doesn't read accurately below 0.2 ohms. Fair enough. So I think I'm going to invest in one of those tabs. All right, this is the moment of truth. If it starts to leak, then uh, then I fucked up. So far, so good. All right, what I want to do before much time goes by, I want to get this thing sizzling and heating up, just because. You really never know until you get some wattage into this thing if it's going to maintain. 
Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Like with an RTA, yeah. you want to get some heat into the coils so you could swell the cotton a little bit and yeah. any sins get forgiven. All right, let me stop presenting. Do me a favor. Somebody else talk for a second or two. Okay. All right, perfect. Okay. <laughs> James uh, Grunt. James uh, Grunt would have a Yo. <laughs> Have you got the hang of working your room major yet, Jim? Yes. I'm not using very much work whatsoever now, so no more burnt heads. Nice. All right, still reading point three three. I got my IPVLI out for this occasion. It's not leaking. I'm using boosted by boosted and that's like a 70-30 juice. Is that a little bit of a cop out that I didn't actually do the build and do the wires? Hey, here's a tip. No. The thing comes with two sets of wire uh, two sets of coils. Use them. And, and comes with cotton. And the cotton don't use that. It's like bullshit cotton. That's like, hey, Jimmy, go to the market and pick up some cotton so we can put it in this thing and get it out to those Americans so they can buy it. <laughs> get back here on the double. Don't, no loafing. It's it's like uh, oh. that. Okay. So I did try and use it, and then and then I was like, whoa, uh-oh. Uh, it's, it's too... It's just not enough substance. Now that's fine. I'm being I'm being a little bit of a jerk for for the camera here, but still, it, it's a little too fluffy for my likes. I like to use something that's going to be a little more durable. All right, that's uh, that's 50 watts. Have you ever noticed? Trucking. Have you ever noticed that when ju juice does leak, if you've been vaping on it, the the juice is the same temperature as your skin, so it'll like drip out several times before you first notice it. Yeah, and then scald you. Have you ever gotten like one of those nasty burn blisters from burning yourself from hot juice? No, I'm a temperature controlled guy, man. My juice is never that hot. Okay, true. <laughs> All right, at 60 watts, I uh, I did dry hit this thing. So let's say the Creus around 50 watts on the pre-built coil, perfect. It's a yummy vape. You want to press the envelope, take six, seven hit second hits. You're gonna have problems unless you're vaping like a 50-50 juice. And at that point, if you need five to seven second hits on your vape, um, I don't know what you're doing with an RTA. It's not the right setup for you. So that's the Creus. Oh, let me show you the uh, the filling. Is a, you know, it's not the easiest fill in the world. It's not top fill. It's side fill. See that? That's how you fill it. You, you just pop it up. You pop that up. And then you got to get a nozzle on either side of that center chimney. So you jam it this way or this way, whichever way you got to angle it in there. And you got to kind of hold it at a little bit of an angle. But um, yeah, so far so good. I like it. And now it's now it's leaking on me. Oh, you know why? Because I just opened the top fill. So you did. You did. You depressurized the cabin. Yeah. I did exactly to what I told everybody. Yeah, yes, you did. All right, so no, I did that on purpose. Yes, you did. I did, I did that on purpose. Good, good show, good show. Show us what we're not supposed to be doing. I got you. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of which, I, I meant I, I fucking meant to do that, and uh, and that way, you know, anybody watching, if you're gonna go open it to top fill it, it lets. That surface tension all out of there, so you got to close. That's why it has this, like, close off the uh, 
Yeah, let me show you guys. You got to close off those juice ports. Then you can open it. And and while you're at it, close off the airflow while you're at it too. If you're going to open that, so that's the only thing. You're going to lose. I mean, it'll all dribble out pretty quickly. <laughs> I'll take one. I'll take one for my audience. <laughs> totally intentional. You didn't that's, start that's out. Static, that's dedication for you. That's that's me being a dumbass. That's stupidity. <laughs> but the worst to, part is that you warned us about that stupidity at the beginning of this episode. Like, if you're gonna do this, close the juice hose. You'd be able to open it. <laughs> <laughs> and then I do what everybody does again. All right. Also worth mentioning and demonstrating here is the fact that not only does this come with all those spare parts, but it also comes with the yellow screwdriver. They give you the good one, the good one. That's the nice that's, beefy. That's going to cause racial tensions amongst the rest of my blue screwdrivers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even going to not even going to go there. All right, so that's that. And uh, end of the show, guys. Not bad. What else do we want to talk about today? Shameless plug. My uh, Billow V2 reviews just been uploaded, so go check it out. The, the Billow V2 Nano? No, the Big Dollar. Oh, okay. Okay. How do you like that? It's been going well. I've had a couple of months, so any mastered the wicking and all that and so cool. It'll be, it'll be a bit weird doing a, a build watching it through a camera. Yeah. That, that was a new experience. <laughs> yeah, it takes quite a bit of uh, a knack to get used to that. It's not an easy instant transition. Like I'll sit there yeah. and build all the time, but doing it on camera and like holding it there in front of there's a lot of videos I did where I do a whole build and I didn't realize I was shifted six inches to the left of the camera. <laughs> And yeah. nobody, could, nobody could see shit that I'm doing, and you just have to listen to me. <laughs> and then I was sitting there wondering, how come nobody's subscribing to my channel? <laughs> I'm a dummy. Show, show people something that they want to watch, and maybe they will. Uh, let me go check chat. Who, who else came in? We got 19 people. 20 people watching. Wow. Okay. Groon Dangla. What's up? He or she is always, I, I see your comments all the time. Yep. Mike C is on there. Dwayne, Dwayne Budget Vapes. What's up, buddy? Good to see you. Dwayne's the guy that got me the um, the Endura from Inikin. Uh He sent me out that starter kit from Inikin, which was nice. And I just got that Cool Fire, uh, the new Cool Fire Dwayne hooked me up with to review. I got that review coming on that. That just came in the other night. Um, thank you, Dwayne. Dwayne is a representative here in the U.S. for Inikin, and uh, he has a review channel, Dwayne's Budget Vapes. But he says, he says he's not very good at the reviews. I disagree. I think you know what? Everybody's got a relatability, and everybody's got a, a story in their heart. If you enjoy doing it, do it. Don't worry about if people like it or not. You, you, a funny thing happens. You get better over time, and then people start digging what you do. There's big, big natties in. The chat, what's up, brother? Hey, if you want to jump in on this thing, man, I uh, I left the link up top there. If you feel like uh, like being photogenic today, got B. Moraski's on, Samantha C. There's a lot of people. We just lost somebody. <laughs> John, John Bilger, Samantha. Hey, Samantha. Oh, okay. Give me a shout out. They smoke his bloodline. Because they're doing a sale for like uh, 25 bucks for 100 milliliters. I think until Christmas. Okay, you came in a little choppy there. So it's it's Vape Smokers Bloodlines, and they're doing a sale, 25 bucks for 100 milliliters of juice uh, from now until Christmas. That's a good deal. 25 bucks for a 100 mils. Quarter of a milliliter of juice, that's good. It's the best uh, strawberry milk I've ever baked. Absolutely. Oh yeah, I got something that can rival that, but I'd be interested to put them to the test. Um, that's now that, that's now that, that zombies are out. Tell me about the other day, though. Oh yeah, the zombie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I got that all set over here as well. Oh, it's, yeah? supposed, it's supposed to be a sweet, creamy strawberry custard, but I am getting no strawberry from it, and a few other people have let try it. Aren't getting the strawberry from it either. So. No, it tastes more like a kind of like a candy custard to me. Cool. Cool. So far, so good on this uh, Krius tank. So, what kind of build? Paul, what kind of build did you, since we're talking about RTAs, what uh, kind of 20, build did you do? 24 gauge 6 rep, you know, Bill? That seems to be my go-to sort of build for it. Came out around a 0 0.23, 0 0.24. Nice. You don't need any more than that in an RTA. Yeah. Did you uh, space the coils or were they tight no. bunched up contact coils? Contact. Okay. Because I'm using 24 gauge wire, so and as you know, the, there's not much space in the pillow for bills work. So I almost feel like with the Goblin Mini and the Billow Mini, uh, the Nano one, um, it's such a tiny little build deck. I was actually using 27 gauge six wrap, yeah, around a two millimeter, and then it fit, and I could gap the coils nicely. Yeah. I don't I don't do well with uh, with contact coils in an RTA because I always feel like I get out the hot spots and then I juice it up I close it all up and then then it's there it's set I can't do anything about it yeah and then and then um, if there's any screw ups then I lose a whole tank full of juice that's the good thing. what's that that's the good thing about the aroma miser wise because you can do the same sort of thing as you can do in the crease. Except I've done contact coils on it. Oh, look at that. Verticals. Very nice. Let's see. Can you hold that close to the camera? We can see how you wicked that. Oh. Just the tiniest bit of cotton at the bottom. And just tuck it in nicely. That it's nice and fellerly on the, the bottom. Where, where does the airflow come in on that? It comes directly into the coils. So you got cotton over in there right. between the airflow and, and the coil? And it's still the there. coil comes from here. There's four air full slots there on the side, which you can see right through. Oh, okay. Which go directly to the coil. Oh. So it is more like the. more like dripping, realistically. Like. Hmm. Do you think um, you have the two-hole uh, band for that? I do indeed. Um, is cool. it a better idea, is it? It is because um, because when you set it up just right, only two of the holes are actually in front of the coils, and two of the holes are right behind the posts. That's very true. That's very true. If I can remember trying to got the box of it. <laughs> I'm gonna have to get one of those aroma misers. I've I've just been hearing too many good things about it for too long for me to not own one yet. So now I'm actually hearing at the minute that the Creus is a better tank than the aroma miser. I'd like to line them up side by side and experience that. Yeah. The the mutation X tank supposed to be better as well. From over here. That's another one on my radar I want to get. Yeah. I'm waiting on the Bellis coming, and I'm going to do my first uh, NI300 build in it. I've never used the nickel wire lip, so that'll be fun. Okay, that should be interesting. What mod are you planning on using that at your Snow Wolf? No, all of the Cooper Mini coming as well, so I'm going to try to pull them off. Very nice. The two both get here at the same time, so. Means I can test the temperature control on the paper money with the balance. So. Are you getting an upgraded 75 watt Cooper Mini or the 60 watt that came out over the summer? I think it's 75 watt. Cool. Yeah, that's got uh, that's got a setting for stainless steel as well. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. Nice. So you're gonna have some interesting, some more good, uh, good material for videos to post. Yeah. All right, awesome. That's a really good idea. That works 
Even the flavors better with the two holes. Yeah, yeah, improves flavor big time. Definitely, very nice. That's one of the things I love about vaping. You learn something new every day. Absolutely. That's why that's why I like my vaporium so much because it's like a melting pot of vapor ideas. So just yeah. be in there. Yeah. Learn so much. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, Zach, I don't know if it's your Wi-Fi or what, but um, you got a little bit of... No, maybe it was. Anyway. Oh, he's going to come back in. Sometimes he gets a little squirrely connection. There he it's, goes. The, it's the way my microphone, my microphone squirrels out sometimes. Did you set up that big microphone yet? Yeah, but not through my computer because uh, with it, you can hear uh, people having conversations by my mailbox. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I need like a, a noise gate, but I need a hardware noise gate because I don't know how to do it in software and use it at the same time. You know, after you and Mark were talking about that and you showed that off last week, I was like, damn it, I, I messed out on a good thing. So yeah, that thing legit costs like 280 bucks retail, man. Dude, um, that's an awesome deal. How'd you find that for $65? Um, Amazon sent it to my email box. They must be like paying attention to what my search is. And I've been searching for a microphone, like just kind of play, playfully searching for a microphone for probably a year or so. Before I started doing YouTube videos, I was searching for a mic. Huh. Hey, Amazon, if you're listening, you could send that directly to my physical mailbox. <laughs> <laughs> but it looks kind of technical, like you actually have a soundboard that you have to plug it through? Yeah, I have, um, because it plugs in through XLR here, I'll, um, I'll put it up in front of the uh, screen in just a second here. It's even a language, I, I don't speak that language. <laughs> it's way beyond my capacity for understanding. Hey, guess what? But I use my, uh, yeah, look. Here it is. So the mic gets plugged in just like a professional mic right here. And, like, you have all your knobs and stuff. And it plugs into the computer. Okay. And basically, it, to put it in simple terms, it acts like an external sound card. Wow. Me and, G, me and James were on the G-spot last night. And we were talking to a fellow, he's a truck driver. And he has this uh, noise console headset. Part. He, yeah, part. And it's amazing because he was driving at 60 miles an hour with the window down and you couldn't hear anything for him at all. So I'll make it, make it one of them myself. <laughs> was that the, the, the truck driving vapor guy? Yeah. He's funny. He's dead on. Very nice guy. Like. So he gets he's, he gets on the, the G spot there while he's driving? Yeah. Oh, uh, he was, he was driving down the road last night, and all you could see was black smoke in the distance. And he came up, and it was like a tractor was on fire right in the middle of fuel tankers. And we were like, mate, just put your foot down and get out of it. He was down to show us this fire. We were like, mate, just put your foot down and get out of it. Your back goes up. <laughs> he's a character, that guy. He's, he's He's, funny. He's, think, he's thinking about starting his own channel for noobs. Only doing stuff for noobs. So that's, a, that's a good right. idea. Somebody yeah. ought to do that. Yeah, because new vapors aren't like really going to... If anybody's watching and you're brand new, don't, don't think that this is a simple walk in the park to go and build. I mean, do it. God bless you. And this is why I do the workshop, in case you're dabbling in that stuff, but... That's advanced. That, you, you'll, you'll wreck a whole day trying to figure out how to put... I think we all have doing a build over and over again until you get it right. Oh, it's so aggravating when you when you do it. You spend another hour, and then it, and then it still screws up. You know, like, quit vaping and go buy a pack of cigarettes. <laughs> yeah, and, like, we're all searching for that, uh, that Addy that's easiest to build on. Because, like, I know I have atomizers that are awesome atomizers, but I don't even want to touch them because <laughs> the difficulty of getting a build on them. You know what I mean? Like, I know how difficult it is to build on some of these things. I don't even want to do it. So what's there's, a, there's, a, there's a fellow in my works been vaping for a while, and he wanted to step up his game there, so he went out and bought an XQ2, 
and he wanted um, RTA, so I recommended the Royal Hunter to him. He's been hearing good things. He went out and bought it and came in to work on Sunday and just handled it and go, here, can you put a build in this for me? Easy, <laughs> easiest way to build on. So it was. All right, since we're on the topic, what is the hardest RDA you've ever built on? Um, tugboat was my first one. That was um, okay, yeah, cool. it's, it's only a three post, but the holes are really small. So they are, and when you're using the second wire, and then of course when you're first starting to build and you see all these fancy builds and all, you start trying to do parallel builds and stuff like that. Um, I find it hard on it. But it's like anything once you monster it, it gets easy enough. Anything anything with the word Genesis in it. <laughs> and anything. It's all fucking ridiculously hard to build a Genesis. I never got into it. Um they were the thing before I got into vaping and I didn't see the need to go and tackle that frontier. But man, I gotta give my you know, full props and credit to anybody who still vapes with a Jenny tank. That's the one where you have to take the stainless steel mesh, comes in sheets, you cut it, and then you roll like like a cinnamon roll almost, like a right. little tube of it. Stick that down in the tank, and that wicks your juice. Then you got to wrap your coils around that, and you got this little tiny post. Yeah, you don't wrap coils like traditionally wrapping a coil and installing it. You actually have to wrap the coil around that uh, thing, and you can't wrap it too tight or it won't suck up the juice, and if you don't cook it just right, it'll ground out on the stainless steel. It's like... Oh. Sounds like a nightmare. Yeah. And, and then to vape on it, you have to like... You have, you to, have to keep tilting it. Yeah. Because the thing doesn't go all the way down to the tank. It just sits in the top. So you have to tilt the juice so the juice is touching the thing. Then you can vape. Then... Yeah, no thank you. Uh, but. It's like... It's a whole hobby in and of itself. It's a sub-hobby yeah. of vaping and building on Genesis. But the, fo the folks that, like, they have, I mean, some of those Jenny tanks cost two, $300 and, and up, and they come with mods that cost hundreds of dollars, and they are a very elitist and loyal crew. They're still vaping that yeah. way, and they, they see it as, like, that's the barrier to this ex excellent form of vaping. But, you know, God bless you. You got more patience than me. Way more patience than me. Definitely sounds like a Pete Pissardo kind of thing. It's there's, kind of bagger. There's a guy, uh, if you ever get a chance to check out his vaping channel, he's been around for years, Bishop Peels. Bishop Peels. Right. And, uh, he's local from, uh, I think he lives in Staten Island. I've met him a bunch of times out at uh, a couple of shops he goes to here. But he would, like he has videos from like three, four, five years ago where he's showing how to build a Jenny tank. And um, I remember watching a few of those videos and going, ah, I think I'm going to skip that. <laughs> I'll, I'll that experience. Um, the hardest RDA that I have, I still haven't done a real build on it yet, is I think it's called the Cloud Monster. Um, just really, really tiny. And it's got this juice well. And uh, I'm not going to describe it, but... I did a few builds on it. You actually have to do really tiny coils and tuck them in this little cylinder between the walls of the RDA. I was I was insistent that I was going to master this thing and get it going, and <laughs> it defeated me. I didn't have the patience to stick with that. Like you ever buy something and you want to get your money's worth? Hey, yeah. Robert Mason. What's up, brother? Oh, come on back. Come on back. Get back <laughs> in here, Robert Mason. Hi. Bye. <laughs> He's a guy that does some really, really cool uh, coil builds, and he, he makes coils with, uh, he'll do those framed Claptons where he has, if you know what the end, they're like. Yeah. Um, there's a gal sent me some juice that she's developing, and uh, sub -ohm sauce, I believe it's called, and she threw in one of his Claptons, and it was just work of art. And, uh, I have a couple of videos where I was vaping on it, and I show it off, and it's just amazing. It's a, it's a framed Clapton that's staggered with this outer wrap of, like, 40-gauge, and it vaped incredible. It was like, the coil was, like, that wide, and, and I had to put it on, like, a big 30-millimeter RDA just so that I wouldn't have to, like, bend this work of art masterpiece. But it vaped great. 
Anyway, he was in briefly. But um, here, go four ahead. views already. <laughs> What's that? Four views already. <laughs> I'm up to four views. Awesome. That's us four, though. <laughs> yeah, at one point, it was uh, 29, 29 people watching at the same time. No, that was my video I was talking about. <laughs> oh, what's that? Your, that was my video I was talking about. There's four views already. You're probably at like 400 about now. So yeah. <laughs> oh, the video you just posted has four views. Uh, nice, yeah. Paul. Nice. Well, I'll go watch uh, it after this, then you'll have five. Tonight's e-liquid is this for work. Okay, the Wick Liquor, the beard, and then is that James's juice, the one with the Mr. Potato Head on it? That would be it. <laughs> That's worked sort of like a I like it very nice. Hey, so far so good on this uh, Krius tank, vaping it the whole time we're talking here. Yeah. No, no leaky leaky since the last incident? I did have one little leaking episode, and then I hit it real quick, and it probably heated and swelled the cotton. So I think I might have cut one of those a little too short. And... Um, <laughs> So I got it okay, but I have a funny feeling that if I set this down, it's just going to leak out. So somewhere between that shortness where I trimmed them to and where I started, somewhere in there is the sweet spot, but only you guys are going to know when you fiddle around with this thing yeah. yourselves. But it is worth it. It is, is it a, it's a tank that's worth figuring out the wicking for because it vapes great. I'm at 50 watts. No matter what I do, I was not able to consistently vape the Goblin Mini at anything over 40 for more than a couple of hits uh, without find, a clean drive. I find that with the Delo as well. I normally am a sweet spot around 38 watts. Which is great because it's a nice vape. And then then you don't got to blow through like tanks of juice on, on bigger devices and on bigger tanks. So. Yeah, that's what that's what I'm aiming for is like uh, slower juice consumption at this point. The uh, the crown has really kind of put a dent in my juice supply. <laughs> Have you tried the TFV4 Mini yet, or the TFV4 full size? I can barely afford the crown. I can't afford to keep <laughs> up with those kind of gas prices. <laughs> yeah, th those are, that's like. Overkill on the intensity of vaping. You'll go through a lot of juice. Yeah. Have nothing to show for it, but like, wow. <laughs> just... The Heracles is a lot like that too. So it is running that in the point two coil. Your juice goes down in minutes. Like it's crazy the amount that you go through in it. I'll tell you what. <clears throat> I agree with you there on that. I'm um, I'm really impressed. I just picked this up over the weekend, the Heracles Plus, and um. It's a 0.4 ohm coil. I'm vaping it at 75 watts, and it's not that bad on juice. I mean, it uses it, but at a, a much a much slower rate than the Crown, that's for sure. Fair enough. Really loving it. Um, after we get, I'm waiting for them to like finish rendering or whatever they do on YouTube processing. But when it's done, I'm gonna post it, and then I do a little bit of a too long video while I, I like break in the coil and talk about vaping on it at different wattage but you can you can see by the time I'm done with it and I was, I'm vaping for like a half an hour um, it's at like a half a tank and on any any other big sub ohm tank I would have blown through a whole tank of juice so yeah I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying it I'm I don't enjoying work it. I don't work for sense or Heracles <laughs> <laughs> Well, gentlemen, I'm gonna to have to jump out and go to work. Yeah, man. Hey, thanks for uh, uh, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. I will more than likely be on the G spot later on. All right, cool. Very cool. All right, boss. Hope you're there. Right. Take it easy, Paul. Paul, the cloud chasing cyclist. Find him on YouTube. He's got a growing channel there. Not a lot of subscribers yet, but he's putting up a lot of content, and um, and he's an up and comer on YouTube there. All right. Anything else for the good of the order? Anything else interesting? Any any topics anybody wants to discuss? <laughs> any burning questions? The top mod. This yeah. bad boy. Yeah. P three point one five, and then I got the 
gold plated mech mod. Ooh, sweetness. Wow. It's quite a nice vape size. Not a lot of rattle, not a lot of nothing. And it performs to the standard. Definitely worth its money. Very nice. Is that authentic? Oh, yes. Oh, you put a dent in your paycheck. You're right at that. <laughs> and I've seen them at, at shows. Like, they were at the Miami show, and it in the show prices, it was still quite hefty on the price tag on that, so... It's a deer mod, so it is, and it's a deer setup, but to be honest, it is completely worth it, so it is the you performance know what? from them. Thank you for sharing that, because that's important to know. When when something's good for the sake of its quality and it's worth owning and it's worth spending the money for, um, you know, I didn't understand until I actually spent some some pretty good coin on a nice mod yeah, it makes a difference. It really does. Now I'm not going to go buy ten mods at this price range. Not me. Phenom no. can, but it's a it's a one off thing for me. So I said I would spend that sort of money on a mod. So it definitely was worth it, and I won't be doing it again for a long while. <laughs> I believe everybody should save up their their money and find that mod that just really gets you. A little jazzed up, and then and invest and buy it. You know, don't don't feel like you, you'll you'll know that right mod for you when the time comes along, and you're just yeah. like, oh, I gotta have that thing. And if a month later, while you're saving your money, you still feel like you need to own that, you know, when it's when it's in the yeah. budget and it's right. Absolutely. Yeah. Zach, what's that? What's that mod for you? What's the, that like? The die codes. Extreme yeah. V2 Plus. This thing is not even available in the United States, and it's like 260 American dollars over there. Wow. And so getting one was like, it's one of those forbidden fruit things, because once I found out I wanted it, and then found out I knew I couldn't get it, I was like, what the smuck. And so I was just drooling about it for a while, and then I got an opportunity to get one through DJ Daniel. Uh, sent it my way, and I was like, I'm over. I was over the moon when I got it. I'm still over the moon about it. I love this piece. Hey, you've had that for like a month now, and still loving it, huh? Actually, I've had it for a couple of months, but I had to send it off to get it upgraded to the V2 Plus, like almost as soon as I got it. Now, how much did that cost you in shipping there and back, also to upgrade it? I paid uh, thirty-five dollars, well, forty dollars American. Com- completely. That's all I paid, forty dollars. And then that's, I shipped it there for like uh, sixteen bucks. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. That's good customer service and support right there. And they actually yeah. they actually sent me back the um, piece they took off to replace. They sent me back the piece they took off. Nice. Oh, that's really good. That way, you know, like a good car mechanic gives you your old alternator just just so you have proof that they actually put a new one in. That's And that had to go to Germany? Yeah. It was hard to address the package to Germany. Because yeah. their address system is, <laughs> like, way different than ours. Yeah. This Strasse and that, yeah. Oh. I got yeah, you. and like it, ha- it seemed to have like degrees for a map on it and stuff. I'm not kidding. It was like longitude, <laughs> latitude stuff. I don't know, but <laughs> seriously, it was hard. Conversely, I just shipped a package out to Denmark, and it was like uh, 12 Landstrauss. Uh, that's it, and the city. And it was like a four-digit <laughs> code. Like, wow, that, that wouldn't even. I'm like, that's, I must be missing something. I'm like, are you sure that's that's all of your address? He's like, yeah, that's it. You just put it on there. It'll get here. I hope it does. But uh, when I went on USPS, it was like, that's all the fields that it needed, and then it took it and printed a label for me. So Yeah, I when I went to USPS, the lady had to, um, she had to look at the printout that I got from them so she could correct my address to, like, the correct ordering for our, it was really complicated. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Eighty percent of all the viewers on YouTube are not in the United States, so we got to learn how how the rest of the world works because that's where. If you think you have an audience in the U.S., 
that's nice, but you really don't have an audience you until you get to like worldwide. Then I mean, I just time. think we should we should all decide on a on a simple like you know street number, street, city, state, uh, or country. I don't know. It should be a standardized format. That'd be nice. Maybe in another thousand years, but civilization didn't develop that way. So, <laughs> you know what we could do instead? Adapt. That's all. That's what we're best at. But I love the thought of like my stuff being watched in other countries. My stuff going. I love when somebody in another country wins a a giveaway, because that's just like I don't know. It's so gratifying to say somebody else over there across an ocean, thousands of miles away, really cares about what I'm doing over here. It means something. Have you ever um, have you ever calculated <clears throat> if you take your um, your minutes viewed? You know how you can see your monthly time, your minutes viewed of your videos. Divide that into days, and you realize that like people are viewing you essentially 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's wild. Like you're always on a screen somewhere at all times. Never in my wildest uh, imagination would I have thought a year ago that that would be happening. Um, but it is. It's pretty cool. So, so then taking that, all right, getting off topic of vaping, but one of the reasons I'm doing this thing right now that I'm doing in Manhattan is taking that and saying, okay, so what is it that I'm really doing now that people are paying attention to what I am doing? I, I, I really I start thinking about, like, how can I do this better? How can I do this more interestingly? Um, not just off the cuff, but like, how can I plan my content to really match what people are tuning in exactly to my channel for? And why are they doing that? And how can I give them more of that? So that's a challenge. That's fun, though. Yeah, but you're going to the, uh, you said you're going to the YouTube sessions and stuff, so. Yeah. I think you should thing. get, you know, that's the place to get the education for what, you know, what the answer to that is. It is, and they're, they're, the funny thing is there could be 100 people in a room, and the folks doing the actual classes are YouTubers, like the guy who was presenting last night for that session um, has a channel with 230,000 subscribers, and some of their videos have gone viral with, like, millions of views. Um, uh, the Clunes is the channel, The Clunes. And they do this funny thing where he records random conversations with his mom and his sisters and his aunts. And then him and his friends, like, play act out the scene. And it just, with, with the, the women's voices. And then you see these guys, like, acting out the scene. It's, you'd have to see it, but, like, millions of views because it, it relates to a lot of different audiences. But, um, you know, he said, he said it best. I can only tell you what worked for us and what we found we wanted to do that motivated us to keep doing this week after week, year after year. Um, you're going to have to find that for yourself. So there's no one answer to any of these things. It's just uh, it's creativity. It's, everybody's going to find what works for them. What works best for me is being out there like I'm very good with in the moment here, let's talk. I can figure out stuff to say. And, and it's not always perfect. I screw up, but... Now, people understand that, and when they watch my channel, it's not meant to be perfect, perfectly edited and polished, but it's always like, what randomness is he going to pull up now? So, I, right. yeah, I may be walking on the street in Manhattan or in the subway, and then, like, all of a sudden vlogging. That's fun <laughs> for me. All right, anyway, we got far off topic. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> not here about this bullshit. I'm developing myself as a YouTuber, but, um, <laughs> but at the end of the day, you know, ST asked, Twisted 420, a really good question on um, Not Another Vape Show a couple of months back, and he said, do you ever get tired of doing this, and what keeps you motivated to keep doing it? How do you keep it? Because it does get old after a while. Oh, great. I got another product. Let me show you what it is. Now we're going to dive down. We're going to look at it. Then I'm going to vape. It gets, it gets boring after a while. Um, so how do you find If you don't do it like out of a passion from your heart, then it's not sustainable. And, um, and if you're not excited about it, nobody wants to watch what you're doing. Um, so there's no easy answer to that either, but everybody's got to find their style of what really makes them, like, jazzed up. I can't wait to turn on that, that recorder and, and get this out. Um, yeah. Anyway, babbling. Why don't I turn off the show? And uh, 
thank everybody for watching. Hold on, let's jump back and chat and see who's still with us. Who hung in here? Oh, and I have giveaways, so stay tuned. Wait, wait, don't go anywhere, everybody. Real quick, I promise we're almost done here. Pull up the chat. All right. So, guys, you want to hear uh, who won from the show last week? Yes. Okay. It's, it's the fun part. I torture. Oh, D Daniel's in chat. What's up, DJ? How you doing? Good to see you. He, right. he comes to look at the Danny Extreme whenever yeah. I'm on, on camera. He comes to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. He's like, just you make sure you take care of my baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So last week, I put out a giveaway for the Cloudpour Mini. All right. This is not brand new unsealed. Uh, brand new and sealed. This is the actual one that I did my review on. It's in the box, and uh, I took it out. I did my review. I tested it for temperature control. Temperature control worked. It stepped down power, and um, and I, I don't have a need for it. It's a little cutie. It's 50 watts, but I don't really have a need for more 50 watt devices in my life. Uh, just to show you the, the size of this little cutie, I'll be gentle with it because somebody else is going to own this soon. Compared to, all right, the IPv3 Li, it's a little tiny cutie. All right, so that that I'm giving away, and then um, then I'm gonna pick a winner for for one of my giveaways. You guys okay with that? Oh, all right. Torturing everybody. You got to sit here and listen to me. Oh my god. <laughs> All right. Hey, um, <laughs> while I do this, Zach, why don't you talk about something interesting for a couple of minutes? <laughs> sure. So let's see uh, who I got over here that's more interesting to talk about. What's Big Natty up to? What is Big Natty up to? I don't even know anymore. Let's see. Uh, Oh, uh, no, we talked about this last time. I found out about the fake uh, UL Crown RBA base. Yes. Let's see what else have I got for y'all. I ain't really got a whole lot new except for that phenotype L. All right. So tell us about that. So, like, uh, the phenotype L, hold on a second, because this ain't even the whole phenotype L. Here it is. It's got these big old airflow windows right here on both sides. I really don't like the airflow on it, to be honest with you. Um, it's just too wide. It's not directed enough. So instead, I got this Trinity top glass for it. And that works like a tree. Oh, nice. And almost dead batteries. <laughs> All right, I'm almost done there. Bear with me. Oh, it looks like ST Vapes won. Oh, that's I'm always just, the case. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Okay, so from last week's Coil Build Workshop, uh, that's where I just put Fuse Clapton's on a mutation RDA. I had 162 comments, 47 likes. Hey, guys, if I'm doing a video and uh, you're making a comment, Hit that thumbs up button, please. Thank you very much. Like that video. I appreciate that. The winner is Armando Flores. Armando Flores has a total of one comment and one like. Thank you very much. Now, if you didn't like the video, you would have still won, but I'm just asking people out of courtesy, please do like the video. Armando Flores. Hold on. Let me write this down in my book, my special notebook. <laughs> 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 uh, Cloudpour Mini plus Armando Flores. All right. And I'm just going to tell him that he won. So how does it vape, that phenotype? Do you have that ready to rock and roll and vape on, or have you been? 
Yeah, let me uh, let me throw some decent batteries in it real quick. Please. Because, you know, people want to know. With the Trinity top cap, it vapes like a dream. With its own top cap, I would say uh, the flavor is, is kind of muted. That's just just my opinion. The vertical holes on the original top cap don't do the flavor any justice. They don't allow you to get, like, the whole coil with the air. You get a portion of the coil. And, of course, I'm using the HB6s for safety's sake in parallel. Oh, nice. There's a lot of talk at the minute about the HB sixes that they have been changed, that they're no they're discontinued now and they've been changed to an LG H two, is it? Yeah, they I did hear they were discontinued. Um I got mine back before that was an issue, so I I can't really say. There we go. Let me drip that a little. I don't think I just dry hit that shit. And you can drip right into the middle. I got a couple of horizontal coils in it. Okay. Armando Flores. And that was from... What day was that? Yeah, keeping track of all this stuff has been quite a task, December 1st. Just in case anybody's tuning in and hasn't <laughs> seen this before, not familiar, you're like, what are these guys doing? Uh, Quest for Vape, Daryl Shergan, I'm doing a giveaway every single day the month of December. And, uh, and so right now, so I don't have too many videos posted in a single day, I'm just combining a few different giveaways at the tail end of this live coil building workshop. Armando Flores just won the Cloud Pour Mini. And i got to get going here in a couple of minutes, but real quick before I do, because i got to get on a train to Manhattan within the next 45 minutes. Um, I have another giveaway. This was from last Tuesday. No, it was from Friday, but I, I, okay, I have another giveaway. This was if you commented on my video from the 3rd of December, I believe, and it's for Tally Ho's Wayfair, 120 mils of that juice, and then the Lotus Jellyfish, Lotus Jellyfish, 53 watt internal LiPo, 4,000 milliamp hour with, with pulse, with modulation, this thing hits like it's 100 watts, and, um, and the cyclone tank with no coils. That's, that's hey, you're getting 120 mils of juice, 150 dollar box mod, and uh, and a tank. You can go buy a couple of coils. Let me go pick a winner from that. You guys okay? This isn't boring you to death, is it? I guess it is. No, it's, no. it's killing me, man. It's killing me. No. <laughs> I got a train to catch in 45 minutes. <laughs> Bear with me one second. So, what's new in your world, vaping wise, James? Not a whole big pile, to be honest with you. Um, I have one of them Trapper Minis coming next week, I think. I do believe it is. Um, Doing a lot of mixing at the minute, getting sort of prepared for over the Christmas period, so then I don't have to be at that sort of thing. Um, other than that, not really a big pile. We do have a competition on the Faber's Network at the minute for 300 mil of Aegis. If you watch the Paul Clay Chase and Cyclos video, he will tell you how to enter and what you need to do. Oh, very cool. So that's the Vapors Network group on Facebook. Yep. All right. And uh, you guys are getting up there in membership. What do you got, about two, 300 people? We're sitting at about 
a hundred and seven or something roughly at the minute. But oh. you know, we're a small growing group, but at the same time we're trying to keep it original the way it was from the very beginning, so we'll get there in time. Yeah. Member twice. It's a good group. I love that you guys post like videos every day with a theme and you know, shout outs and firebacks, call outs. It's great. I try and jump on there and do a video a couple of when I can. When I can. Absolutely. And that's what it's all about. It's all about having fun, enjoying your vape, enjoying what you do. What's today? Terrible laugh. Tuesday? You gotta find the worst song? Yeah. The okay. worst song that you can possibly think of and play it. I think Jordan's got the prize on that one. Absolutely. <laughs> Don't be a spoiler, but that that was that was awful. That was god awful. <laughs> Great video. Okay, so for the fifth day of this holiday advent calendar giveaway, oh wow, 443 views already. This was from, let me write this down, this video was posted. So I'm giving a couple of days for people to jump in on the video, get it. All you have to do is make a comment, hopefully like the video. Thank you. Here, I'm going to like my own video. Give it a thumbs up. For the December 5th, that was 120 milliliters of Wayfarer from Tally Ho. That was the Lotus and the Cyclone tank. It's a good tank. I reviewed it. I rocked that thing up to 150 watts. Legit. And drum roll, please. Oh, wait a second. Load comments. Ah, see, this is more like it. A total of 163 comments, 145 likes. Thank you very much, everybody, for liking. And let's go ahead and pick the winner is Justin Grank. Granky, Grank, G-R-A-N-K-E. Now let's check something. He only commented once. That's good. He didn't try and double post. And he did like it. Thank you very much. Justin Grank. Granky. Congratulations. You won that big ass prize. It's a nice it's a nice prize package. Wouldn't you guys agree? Absolutely. And then just one more quick shout out. Uh, within the next hour, actually the next 20 minutes, I'm going to be posting a video. It's a review for the Sense Plus, the new, uh, I'm sorry, the Heracles Plus tank from Sense. And there's going to be a giveaway for Uncle Junk's Fog Cabin juice, just the juice line, 90 mils of juice. Um, guys, thank you so much for tuning in, watching, joining me on my coil build workshop. Really, it was a, a wicking workshop today. And I appreciate the company. I appreciate everybody out there in chat that was uh, watching. Um, that's it. And that's all. Let's go ahead and take a vape and then say goodbye. All right, guys. Have a great day.